Hello, and welcome to another American Photo Tricks post-processing video. I'm Dave Soldano. Good to see you all again. Thank you for tuning in. And this is the second video that goes along with our stacking and tracking workshop that we did last weekend. And this video was to address the question some people had regarding how do I blend my tracked image with my uh, landscape. Uh, a lot of people aren't that familiar with masking, so this is going to be just a quick video on how to mask an image. And we're going to do it the way I do it, which is probably a little different than some other people, but hopefully you'll find it useful. And again, you can follow along with me every time I hit a keystroke, it po pops up right here. So you can follow along and hopefully follow along at your own pace. So this isn't going to be a lot of post-process or anything. This is going to be strictly all about just um, how to mask one image into another the way I do it. And I'm going to start off uh, real quickly here with just um, just like a little bonus information here. I took this picture right here with a uh, 14 millimeter lens and as you might guess I had it tilted up just a little bit which caused this distortion here. And some people may like it and think that looks kind of you know dramatic. Other people might say no that looks strange. Well either way there's a cool way to fix it. You simply go to filter, lens correction, and it brings it up in lens correction. And there's a whole lot of things that you can do. You just um, auto correction and customs and different things and go ahead and experiment whatever you want to do. But for this one, because I had it tilted up, I'm just going to correct it by basically doing the opposite. I'm going to take this vertical perspective and bring it all the way here to where we're just about right again. And all I have to do then is hit OK and OK. So there we are. Now I'm ready. Now one thing I would say is uh, to make your life easier when you're going to blend an image, make sure that you can see a, a good break between your sky and your foreground. And here it's good just about everywhere except for maybe right at the barn roof. So I'll, I'll start off by going into Camera Raw and just bringing up my shadows a little bit and maybe bringing up the exposure a little bit just to make my life easier. I can always bring that back down when I'm ready to post process. When I'm creating a mask it's going. this is going to help me make my life easier and say OK. So now it's nice and bright. So what I want to do is I want to take my tracked image and here's my tracked image. I shot this with a 35 millimeter lens about a two and a half minute exposure. So you can see the Milky Way looks big and it has a lot of definition in it. And uh, so I'd like to put that instead of uh, this Milky Way which looks smaller and not as dramatic. So how do I do that? Well first of all I'm going to start off with a quick selection. I'm going to use my quick selection brush and I'm going to take it right there near where I want my break to be. And it does a pretty good job of selecting. It just seems to know. Isn't that amazing? And we're pretty darn close here, but we're not 100%. So to refine this mask, I'm going to click on Select and Mask. And now you can see real well the mask and you can use your zoom tool here to zoom in to places where there might be problems. And as I suspected, the top of this barn is pretty close in color to the sky, so I'm going to have to do a little manual. So to do that, I'm going to have to select a brush. I'm going to put it on minus because up here is where it was masked down. Here's what's masked out, so minus and I'm going to manually paint this right here. You can see I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm doing the best I can. And then coming down here. Now, even though I haven't done it perfectly, I can use this brush, which is called the Refine Brush, to help me make this a more perfect mask. And here we got this little edge poking out down here. I can use the refine brush and there it just kind of seems to know, especially since I helped it out a little bit. Then I use the refine brush here 
and oh, it's not working too good there. And I can just kind of paint that away. Just refine this edge a little more. And you see what I'm doing there? And it'd be nice not to have to do this, but sometimes you have to. So now we look around, make sure the rest of the mountains are nice and defined, and boy, they sure seem to be. And look here, but this pole didn't quite get it, so we'll go back up to our define tool, make our brush a little smaller, and then there we go. Smart refine tool figures that out pretty well. Now we're pretty darn close. So I just hit OK. Back to my fit screen, and we've got a good mask. But what we have is a mask of the sky, and what we want is a mask of the foreground. So that's easy. We just go up to Select, Inverse, and now it's selected the inverse of the mask. So I'm going to use this on a couple different layers, and I want to be able to use it again. So I don't want to have to go through and create that selection every single time. So I'm going to say Select and Save selection and I'm going to call that selection barn one and save it right there just like that now I can recall this selection anytime I need to all right now it's time to go get my Milky Way so here's my Milky Way select all edit copy and there's faster ways to do that but I just want you to see what I'm doing instead of just a quick keystroke I'm, co I'm selecting everything and then copying it. Now I'm going to bring it over here to the picture that I want to bring it into. And to bring it in, I do use Control V, which simply pastes it as a layer over the barn. So now I, my top layer is my tracked Milky Way. My bottom layer is this barn image that I have. So you see that one stacked on top of another. But to do what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and copy this background. I'm just going to right click and say duplicate layer. OK, I'm not going to call anything different. And I'm going to drag this layer up to the top. So now that I've got, I've got barn, tracked Milky Way, barn again. And these little eyeballs just turn off being let you see the image. So now I want to see what it's going to look like with my tracked Milky Way as the sky. And I've already done the selection, so I don't want to have to do it again. So what I'm going to do is just go select, load selection, and pick barn one. And there it is. So now there's a couple different ways to address how to get rid of the sky on this layer. And a lot of people will say, just go edit and cut. And Oops. <laughs> Let's go back. Select inverse. A lot of people would say edit and cut. And there would be the sky. And that's okay. And there's, it's all right if that's what you want to do. But uh, for me, there's a, a more refined way to handle that. And instead of just cutting it, I'm going to create a mask that I can edit. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> All right. Here we go. And there's my mask. So now I can edit this mask that I've created so that if I want to add some elements or refine some elements of this mask, I can do it easily with my brush. And you can see the mask right here. The part that's been cut out is black. The part that's still there is white. So if you want to add to this front part, you just grab a white brush. And I'm going to grab this white brush at about a 24% opacity. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I like, you know, this is fine, um, but I kind of liked that glow we were getting from the city in the distance. I think that kind of added a neat highlight and element to the picture. And of course, it's completely gone right now, but I can use my brush to slowly brush that back in. 
and I'm using a low opacity brush because I want to do it gradually like this and so what's happening here is it's take it's just kind of creating a blend there of these two images where I'm painting now something you're going to notice right away is it starts to be kind of obvious where the more I go over this it becomes more and more obvious where one picture ends and the other one begins. A couple things I'm going to do to fix that. First I'm going to take my opacity down all the way to like 13 percent and I'm going to paint that right on the edges of these two pictures like that. Then the main thing that's making this different is the color of the sky. So I'm going to go to or I'm going to click on my picture right here and I'm going to hit Image Adjustment Color Balance. And I'm going to use these sliders to try and get this top picture more to the color of the foreground, more to the color of the sky. And look at that. I can see that, you know, what's going on there. So now they're blending real well. I can use my slider to do this. and they're pretty darn close and I would if I had more time I'd refine right here a little bit more but that again is pretty darn close so now it looks much better and much more realistic but another thing I might want to do is I'm, I might uh, want to alter reality a little bit more even more than I did and maybe move this layer around to try and make the Milky Way even more dramatic and there's different ways to do this, but my favorite is just to select this layer and hit Control T. Control, Control T means to transform. And tra in this case, you can move it, make it bigger, make it smaller, even warp it a little bit. And you do it using these. So in the middle, I can just if I move it, I can just plain old move it around. Maybe I just want the Milky Way more over here. It's fine, I can do that. And maybe I want to make it bigger. I'll just grab an end and drag it, make it even bigger. And then put it where I want it. Kind of blend it a little bit more with my other image. So now you've got a pretty dramatic image of the Milky Way right there. And all to, uh, to lock it in, you just click the check mark. Boom. Now, then again, you can go back and if, if that messed with your adjustments that you made before, you can go back to your color balance and again work on that to bring them together so that they blend better. Whatever you might want to do makes it work better. And may have to work on it a little bit. And it's not a big deal if it changes drama too dramatically other things in your picture because once you get a picture that's blended well, then you can go ahead and then start editing the whole picture. You just want to make sure that it blends well. And in this case, it kind of does. And again, I can always go back to my mask and adjust as I need to to make it blend. And like I say, you can work on this area right here a little bit more or there. Or if you want, you could have just cut it straight, you know, with uh, and now you can go ahead and blend your, uh, you can hit layer, flatten, and start to post process your Milky Way image. And so that's just a quick video on how to uh, blend your stacked image with your tracked image. I'll show you one quick little thing using a plugin that really is a nice thing, a filter. It's called Skylum Software. We mentioned it during the class, Luminar 4. 
and it is an amazing plugin for processing Milky Way images. And I'll do a quick demonstration of it, nothing too dramatic, but uh, just take a look at what this uh, AI Enhance does. Just a great little one slider effect. AI Sky Enhance, another great little one slider effect. And Mystical is fun to give the Milky Way more of a kind of a cloud realistic look. And you can play with this, do all kinds of things to really tune your image in. And that's it. That's as much as we'll take care of in this video. But that's how to blend your tracked image with your terrestrial image to create a single one in using a mask. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to let this finish. And if you can, please join us on any one of our American Photo Trex workshops. We do have a lot of fun when we go out. And we're having another one tonight. We're going out to... Uh, east of Colorado Springs and we've got some other barns and windmills that uh, we're going to shoot with the Milky Way and have a good time there and as always we offer post-processing videos to help you create images that you're going to love and want to share. All right everybody have a great Memorial Day weekend hope you have a lot of fun and thanks again for tuning in. Bye-bye.